home, Manly's socialist dream had become a middle-class nightmare. If you don't like it, Manly told them, there are five flights a day to Miami. In the months that followed, thousands took his advice. Planes were packed with Jamaica's middle classes, taking their money with them. When the first serious attempt at change was made, as always happens, there was a sort of almost like a shockwave that goes through the people who are better off and who have never really questioned the nature of the society under them. And uh, so you, you did have a, a very real and regrettable reaction to some aspects of change. Most of these were of the entrepreneurial class. So we had the horrendous picture of the country sliding into eight years of negative growth, record high inflation, record high unemployment. With the wealthy leaving in droves and USAID cut from $13 million to a mere four, Manny was in deep trouble. What he saw was an American conspiracy to bring him down. Michael had enough grassroots support to win the 1976 election, but the crisis still deepened. Foreign businesses found more friendly places to invest their money. They frightened away every foreign investor that we had, and a lot of local investors at the same time, because they were threatened, they were told that they were not the sort of people that were not wanted here, uh, that Jamaica was going to be a socialist country, and that uh, the capitalist was no longer welcome. Uh, America was called a wicked imperialist capitalist nation and exploiter and the whole ambience of the place was very frightening to any kind of investment. Of greater concern, the urban poor were losing patience. Michael Manley had no choice but to bow to US pressure as his socialist dream of a free, equal, independent Jamaica crumbled before his eyes, he went to the World Bank and effectively handed over the running of the country to the IMF. Jamaica's future would now be in the hands of foreigners. He was, you know, a sort of proud person who felt that although your country was small, that you had rights like everybody else. And I think he realized the extent to which these rights were going to be withdrawn. Less than 20 years of independence had brought the island back to financial slavery. The IMF loan of 29 million was not enough and came with strings attached, which put an end to social reforms and led to shortages. We can't get oil, we can't get detergent, we can't get flour, we can't get rice. Everything in a hole you can't get. Raise the reason I chose to have a baby in that 1980 election year. And he was premature, he was in the hospital for about three weeks in the intensive care unit at the hospital for premature babies. And I was able to interact with working class mothers on a day-to-day -day basis. They'd all come, we'd all come to visit the baby and our babies, and you know, we'd talk. And one of the things we talked about was the shortage of food stuff. <laughs> I saw people who were willing to die just to free Jamaica at that time because the people felt that they were in bondage. There are people who left Jamaica who died abroad very, very unhappy and very sad. There are people who still live abroad who swear they'd never come back to Jamaica because it was such a bad experience for them. It was a downfall telling you, it was a period where people hated him. They really hated him.